In this video, I'm going to offer you a few different options for tracking back orders. I have the one that I strongly recommend using. Uh, however, there are different, you know, changes and different businesses and everybody has their own business practice. So I'm going to offer you all three and then you can decide what works best for you. <laughs> all right. So first thing, the way I'm, I'm going to tell the way that I prefer is your sales orders here. Okay, so if you don't have sales orders turned on, you go up to edit and then preferences. Go on up to desktop view, company preferences, click on sales orders, and enable sales orders. Okay, so that turns it on. It puts it on your little home page here. So you have your sales orders. All right, come in here and take away this little history for now. Choose a customer. We're going to go ahead and say Brian Cook. Choose a couple items that Brian is ordering. We're going to say some brass hinges. Okay, he's going to order 15, and the rate is $10 each. And the classes, new construction, it's taxable. All right, so now we're good on this sales order. So from here, all right, when I save this, the first thing to note is when I go look at my quantity on hand for this item, notice how it has 15 set aside on a sales order. So it takes that 15 out of these uh, quantity on hand and says, no, you only have six, 1,616 available because you already sold five on a sales order, even though we haven't shipped it yet. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and create the invoice. Okay, I'm gonna save for all the items here. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on here and push 10. So I only have 10 that I'm going to invoice for right now. And I'm going to customize this because it's not showing me my progressive columns, my back ordered column. Okay. Notice here, again, I have under my customized templates, my additional customization, I have my progressive columns and I wanted to add that back ordered column here. Okay, it's out of order, but I'll just leave it there for now. So we have five back ordered. All right, uh, even though we have them on hand, we know that because we just looked, but we're just going to pretend like we have five back ordered right now. Okay, so when I save this and then I go into my customer center and I go over to my transactions and my sales orders, and instead of saying all sales orders, I'm just going to say open sales orders. Here's the one that we just created for Brian. And notice the amount, the total amount was 161. The open balance is 53.75. If I double click on this here, it tells me that I invoiced for 10 so far and I back ordered five. To me, that's a pretty easy, easy way to figure out what's on back order. Okay. Uh, the other thing here, if you decide you're never going to send out these additional five, you can uh, mark the entire thing as closed. Or you can mark each individual line as closed if you have multiple lines and you're going to not mail out this one, these five, but you might still finish the back order on the next line. Okay. So then that's the option that I prefer, again, because they set aside the quantities in inventory. Now it just says I have five out, right? Because I've already invoiced for the others. Um, so it tells you, it takes away the quantities on inventory. And it also gives you a quick report here. I mean, it's very easy to search for open sales orders to see which one you want to uh, use on a back order. But I've had many clients tell me that doesn't work for them. They have too many sales orders, right? Okay, so then another option that you have is when you create this invoice for the uh, 10 uh, right here that we already invoiced for, you also at the same time create another invoice for the back ordered portion. Okay, so now it's going to create the invoice. It says we're invoicing for five because we already invoiced for 10 before. Then there will be zero on back order. So here is the total. Okay, so instead of saving this, though, we're going to actually go up to edit and mark it as pending. Okay. 
So what this does is it just kind of sets the sale aside. It's a non-posting transaction. It's not a sales order because it's not coming out of inventory at this point. So I'm going to save this. So if I go to my invoice here, no more on sales order. So it's telling me that I actually have more available than I really do. But of course, if they're back ordered, you'd think that that quantity is zero anyway. So you mark it as pending. And then you can come in and look at your reports here under sales and pending sales. And it'll come up there. So you'd have a list of all your pending sales. So then you'd know all the ones that are back ordered. So this is a way to keep it separate from the open sales orders. Okay. Then once you're done with that marking it pending, you just come in here. You say mark invoice as final. And that's when it's actually going to post. All right. So the third way that I've seen people do it, or I've, I've, Actually, this is the way that I think Intuit recommends doing it as well, is having a custom field that's called back order. So you can always run a report for everything that needs to be back ordered. Um, so what I do is I come into you know my customer center and I'll create a custom field by double clicking on my customers, clicking the additional info tab, down to define fields. I'll make a field called back order. All right, make it available. I'm going to make it a multiple choice list and just put in BO and that's it. Don't let anybody else add anything to it. So they have just BO or nothing to choose. Okay. So then on your uh, on your invoice here, mm, no, nope, that's not the right invoice. We're talking about cook. On your invoice here, Okay, then you could add a custom field and uh, the custom field could be back order and you would just select BO here, say save. Okay, and then what you'd be able to do is essentially run a report, custom transaction detail report and filter for all back order that says BO. Okay, and then it would pull up for you the invoices that have that on it. Another kind of weird workaround, um, but those are the uh, three options so far that I've heard on how to make QuickBooks work for you and uh, still do back orders.